coming to insect taxonomy. Taxonomy is a science of classification. So, let us see the definition of taxonomy given by Simpson in 1961. He has defined taxonomy as the theoretical study of classification including the basis, principles as well as procedures and rules for classifying the insects and taxonomy includes two terms that is nomenclature as well as classification. So, now let us see the definition of systematics. It's a science of study of a kind and diversity of organisms and any or all the relationships among them is called as systematics. So, it is uh, quite often confused with the definition of uh, taxonomy. So, it is uh, essential to know the clear cut differentiation between the taxonomy as well as systematics and systematic includes taxonomy and evolution. So, taxonomy can be said as a part of systematics and classification is the ordering of large group of organisms based on the certain char characteristics into small groups that is based on the similarities. And coming to different stages of taxonomy that is the taxonomy of any group passes through several stages that is alpha, beta and gamma taxonomy. So, alpha taxonomy is concerned with naming and characterization of a species whereas, beta is concerned with the classification and gamma taxonomy is uh, uh, concerned with the evolutionary relationships and the phylogeny. So, these three, so any classification has to pass through all these three stages and taxonomy includes the classification, nomenclature as well as identification of the organism. Coming to classification, biological system of classification is called as hierarchical concept of classification. It was given by Carl von Linnaeus in the year 19, 1758. A large group of organisms is successfully subdivided into small group. These groups are called, these small groups which are divided by Linnaeus are called as the taxa or taxon. It is singular, a singular word and each group is at particular level in the system. That level is called as a rank of a taxon. That level of particular uh, organisms or group which is grouped is called as rank of a particular taxon and group of the same rank are grouped groups of same rank are grouped together and that constitute the taxonomic category called as class. So, all the organisms of same rank are grouped into a similar group one more similar group that is called as a class and certain taxonomic categories are obligate and while others are optional. For describing and classifying any organisms, the basic taxonomic category is species. So, this is very important in the exam point of view. The basic taxonomic unit of classification is species. And the system, the biological system of classification was introduced by scientists that is Carl von Linnaeus in the year 1758. So, these uh, let us mark some of the important points in this particular slide. So, what are the different groups of organisms uh, uh, which are classified by Linnaeus are taxa plural being the taxon and each group is at particular level. What is the, the hierarchy? At the hierarchy, each group there is a level of the classification that is called as the rank of particular taxon. So, species, these are the important points that can be asked in exam. And coming to systematic position of Indian honeybee, here the, I have taken honeybee just to make you understand how the systematic position proceeds for different insects. So, uh, kingdom phylum class this is the chronological order kingdom first uh, then phylum class subclass order suborder superfamily family subfamily genus species so the star marked uh, smart uh, star marked uh, uh, names are the obligate uh, taxa which are uh, must for each classification classification of each insect the star marked taxa are compulsory so, kingdom of uh, Indian honeybee is uh, Animalia, coming to phylum it is Arthropoda, class Insecta, subclass Pterygota, order Hymenoptera and suborder Apocrita, sub superfamily is Apoidea, family Apidae, subfamily Apinae, genus Apis and species are many that is Indica, Dorsata, Mellifera and Floria etc. So, let us now see the suffixes of uh, super specific categories, these are very important in the exam point of view. So, what is the suffix that is the what is the ending word what is the ending word of the tribe name that is ni. So, so subfamily ends in ine, family ends in ide and superfamily ends in oidea. So, these are very important exam point of view if a question from taxonomy is to be expected. Coming to the classification of insects and the important points pertaining to the uh, different competitive exams. Coming to classification of insects, what uh, it is crept in many of the books is by uh, that is given by A.D. Imps. So, here there are two classes, uh, subclasses of class insecta or hexapoda that two classes are Eterigota as well as 
subclass terracotta these are based on the presence or absence of this classification or division into sub uh, subclasses done based on the presence or absence of the wings in a particular insects so let us see the characteristic features of the subclass eterigota that is they are primarily wingless and metamorphosis is absent or slight and mandibular articulation is monocondylic that is attachment is at a single place whereas pregenital abdominal appendages are present whereas in case of uh, subclass terigota the winged or uh, they are actually winged or secondarily wingless so they are generally winged insects if they are absent the pri they were primarily wingless but in the later stages they may lose the wings example for this is uh, uh, siphonculata and malophaga and metamorphosis is slight and mandibular articulation is dicondylic it is it is attached at two places and they are absent pregenital uh, abdominal appendages are absent in this case and coming to eterigota there are four important orders that is thysanura columbola protura and diplura let us see the examples so coming to taxonomy uh, memorizing each of the each of the topic and remembering the scientific names is very important the exam point of view to answer the questions accurately because most of them are most of the eterigot orders are classified based on the tail so protrans uh, protrans are called as tails and tails columbolans are called as spring ta spring tails as well as snow fleas and uh, thysanura is called as silverfish the example for this particular order is silverfish and diplorans are jpigids so memorizing number of times will uh, make you answer the question accurately with confidence in the competitive exam because once the options are crept under a question that is a bit confusing if you don't memorize the topic uh, perfectly so now let us look into the classification actual classification of the terigota so subclass terigota is divided into two different divisions that is exoterigota as well as endoterigota so here uh, there are uh, among the all the orders there are uh, four different uh, categories that is paleopteran orders that are marked in red color paleopteran orders include the ephemeroptera the examples or characteristic insects of that particular order are mayflies and odonata includes dragonflies and damselflies the both uh, the characteristic feature of both these orders that is paleopteran orders is they lack the wing flexing mechanism that is the wing flexing mechanism is absent in both these two orders the wing flexing mechanism is absent okay that is very important point however we'll discuss the minor points which are important uh, in each order separately in the coming slides plecoptera next next group is the ordoptera order orders this includes plecoptera to zooptera so the characteristic insects are examples of plecopterans are stone flies and grillo blattadia includes rock crawlers ordoptera include uh, grasshoppers locusts crickets and mole crickets ordoptera is uh, obviously divided into califera and ensifera califera includes uh, acridids whereas ensifera includes tetigonids that is long horn grasshoppers and phasmida includes two families that is phyllidae and phasmidae phyllidae includes uh, leaf insects and phasmidae includes stick insects and dermoptera includes earwigs embryoptera that uh, web spinners are the characteristic insects or uh, examples of insects under uh, order embryoptera dictyopterans are cockroaches and mantids isopterans are termites and zooptera includes zooptorans so this is the second cat second group that is ordoptera orders and third coming to the third type of uh, category is the hemipteroid orders that includes socoptera to thysanoptera that is thrips socoptera includes book lice malophaga is bird lice siphonculata includes the head and body louse hemipterans includes birds further hemiptera is divided into heteroptera as well as homoptera based on the uh, size of the wings if the two wings uh, two pairs of wings are different is called as heteroptera whereas uh, uniform wings are present then it is called as homoptera most of the insect pests of crops belong to the sub suborder homoptera so honeydew secretion is also prominent in case of homopterans rather than heteropterans then thysanoptera includes thrips so thrips the order is divided into suborder tubulifera and terebranchia and coming to the other division that is uh, panorboid orders it includes neuroptera order neuroptera to siphonoptera that is fleas neuropterans includes antlions aphidlions owl flies and mantis pits and micropterans includes scorpion flies lepidopterans includes butterflies and moths so lepidoptera is divided into suborders and uh, the there are different families of butterflies like nymphalidae etc uh, nymphalidae papilionidae and pyridae and trichoptera includes uh, caddis flies dipterans include the true flies in which the hind wings are modified into haltiers whereas in uh, stepsipterans there are haltier like structures called as pseudo haltiers which are the modifications of four wings 
So, in dipterans, true flies, hind wings are modified into haltiers, streptipterans, the uh, first pair that is four, four wings are modified into haltiers, so they are called as pseudo haltiers. And coming to uh, Siphonoptera, it includes fleas, fleas are uh, laterally compressed insects and Hymenopterans includes bees, wasps and ants, Coleoptera is the biggest, largest order in the, in, uh, in, among the entire orders, uh, Coleoptera is the largest and second largest is the Lepidoptera. This is very important in the exam point of view. The largest order which includes more number of uh, organisms is Coleoptera followed by Lepidoptera. And Strepsipterans includes stylopids or uh, stylopids, these are the endoparasitic insects. There are many exceptional cases in case of uh, Strepsipterans, uh, we will deal in detail in the coming slides. So, remembering, so in the competitive exams, especially uh, in agriculture officer exams or extension officer exams, they won't go much deep into the taxonomy of insects. They will just superficially touch the orders, the examples are under each order and they may go up to the family level. That is, what are the different families that are covered in the each, uh, each order. So, that will be enough to answer the questions, but let us discuss some of the important points which may be asked in other competitive exams like GRS and SRFs and sometimes in the coming exams they may be asked in the other examinations also. So, coming to the important characteristics of the order Ephemeroptera. Wing flexing mechanism is absent. As we discussed earlier, Paleopteran orders include two orders that is Ephemeroptera as well as Odonata. In both of these orders, the wing flexing mechanism is absent. Okay. That is a very important point as far as the taxonomy that is uh, characteristics of Ephemeroptera and Odonata are concerned. And after adult emergence, the body is covered by pellicle. That stage is called as Subimag. So, the order in which the pterygote order in which the stages called subimago as well as imago are present is ephemeroptera. The question will be asked like this. These two questions are asked many times in SDRF and SRF examinations. So, that can be followed in the coming other competitive exams also. So, what happens is what is the difference between the subimago as well as imago is subimago will be having the pellicle. Okay. There in imago, imago is devoid of pellicle, pellicle and the wings in case of subimago are opaque or translucent, whereas in case of imago they are transparent. These are the important points pertaining to the order Ephemeroptera. Coming to order Odonata, as we discussed wing flexing mechanism absent and mandibles are strongly toothed. And these red colors, red colored marked points are very important in case of order Odonata. So, Lesenia and Gallia are fused to form a structure called as Mala. Wings have a dark spot near the coastal margin of, uh, is called as pterostigma. So, suppose this is a hypothetical wing like structure at this region, at the coastal margin there is a dark spot, this is called as dark spot, it is called as the pterostigma. Okay. Next, subcosta ends in nodus, as we know one of the principal vein in the uh, wing, uh, wing venation is the co after costa it is subcosta. So, this subcosta ends in a structure called as nodus and legs are anteroventrally placed. If you see the dragonflies and damselflies, the legs will be appearing just behind below the head in a uh, lateroventral position. So, they are placed anterior ventrally, that is they are pushed towards the uh, front side, that is just located uh, near to head and functional copulatory organ is on the second abdominal segment. Generally, for all the insects, the functional copulatory organ in case of males are located in the ninth abdominal segment, whereas that of females are located in the eighth abdominal segments. But the functional copulatory organ of Odonata is located in the second abdominal segment that is very important. So, all the points, important points is listed under each order are the exceptions or special features or the characteristic features of particular order. So, they have to be remembered. Coming to next order is Plicoptera. These are the indicators of water pollution. 
So, what is the important point pertaining to plecopterans? Uh, plecopterans include stone flies. Okay, the examples of uh, pleco uh, insects under order plecoptera are stone flies. They have uh, the immature stages are called nades in case of plecoptera also, as in case of uh, ephemeroptera and odonata. So, here the indicators of the water pollution, and coming to next order, it is gilloblatodia. The these insects are aterous and eyes are reduced and absent and ocelli are completely absent and the characteristic feature of these grillo blattodians are possession of asymmetric genita genitalia that is the genitalia are asymmetrical and next coming next order is the orthoptera it is a uh, this order is uh, having divisions that is it is divided into two suborders and the characters of those suborders are important in the exam point of view. There are two suborders called Califera as well as Ensifera. They may they may ask you uh, in the aspect that the, where is the location of tympanum in this particular suborder Califera. So in Califerans, that is short horn grasshoppers, the tympanum is situated on the either side of the first abdominal segment. Whereas coming to the short, long horn grasshoppers or Ensifera, that is located on the tympanum of Fortibia. Uh, the tympanum is located on the Fortibia. So you know that. Uh, So, these are they are sound producing organs. So, questions pertaining to tympanum as well as the sound producing mechanism can be asked in this particular order. So, I am just focusing on the important points that can be asked on the examination. So, these two points are uh, the information related to tympanum as well as sound producing organs is important in case of orthoptera. So, sound is produced by femoral, femoral allergy mechanism in case of acridity that is short and grasshoppers. That is here the leg as well as uh, wing, structure, wing structures are involved in the sound production whereas in case of tetigonids only wing so it is only allergy mechanism the wing parts solely are solely involved in the sound production process. So, that are the important points pertaining to orthoptera. Next coming to phasmida, prothorax is very short and meso and metathorax are large. If you generally observe the stick insects and leaf insects, the pro, uh, visually we can notice that prothorax is very short in uh, size and meso and metathorax are uh, large or elongated and metathorax is associated with the first abdominal segment. So, in this particular order is also having two different families that is phasmidae and philidae. Phasmidae includes uh, stick insects whereas philidae includes the leaf insects. So, as I said up to the order level information as well as up to family level is very important for the competitive exams. So, remembering the examples is the main thing. Next comes the order Dermoptera and Embioptera. These two orders are very important because the points pertaining to the caudal sarsae are very important in these two orders. So, coming to Dermoptera, head has distinct Y shaped epicranial suture and four wings are called as tegmina whereas hind wings are semicircular and ear like hence the name dermoptera okay uh, the examples of uh, dermopterans are ear wings okay so hind wings are generally semicircular and ear like and unsegmented forcep like slitized sarsae so question may be asked in which insects the sarsae uh, sarsae are forcep like and slitized that is dermoptera and the same question regarding sarsae may be asked that which of the following or insect orders may possess asymmetrical sarsae that is males of embiopterans. Remember carefully only the males of embiopterans have asymmetrical sarsae whereas the females possess equal sarsae. So, the sex of these particular embiopterans which possess asymmetrical sarsae is also very important and embiopterra is considered as a sister group, sister group to both the orders zooroptera as well as phasmatodia. Okay. And basitases, so silk glands and spinnerets are also present in the embryopterans, but the location of these silk glands and spinnerets in this particular order embryoptera may be asked as a question that is the basic tarsus of the forelegs. So, all this there will be only 2 to 3 important points pertaining to each order. So, remem remembering and memorizing these important points may fetch you in answering the questions in the examination. So, embryoptera there are only 2 important points that is it is considered the sister group of 2 orders that is zooroptera as well as phasmatodia and it basic task of the forelegs is possessing the silk glands and spinnerets for silk production. And next coming to females they are aterous. Females of embryopterans are wingless aterous. Okay. 
and males have smoky wings without venation. Males are having somewhat smoky black color uh, wings without clear venation, without clear venation and hind femur is enlarged with uh, which helps in the back runners. So, there are two important terms which insects are called as back runners, the example are embiopterans. And there was one more term side runners, which insects are called as side runners that is leaf hoppers or jacids, jacids are called as side runners whereas embiopterans are also called as back runners. And now asymmetrical survey we already so these points whichever are marked in red or whichever are uh, rounded off are very important exam point of view pertain to these two orders okay coming to next orders that is mecoptera usually it is carnivorous and main gel male genitalia are prominent in this uh, particular order and next order is trichoptera wings are membranous and are held in the roof like position over the abdomen so this is the characteristic feature of this particular order trichopterans that is the wings are held in a roof like manner if you, even if you see uh, uh, superficially visually when at, uh, when the insect is at rest you can observe this uh, this pattern so it is characteristic of order trichoptera and wing venation is quite reduced and coming to next order that is siphonoptera these are laterally compressed insects so there are two terms laterally compressed insects and dorsoventrally compressed insects so dorsoventral compression is seen in case of siphon clet and malophaga that is louses Whereas, in case of fleas, siphonoptera includes fleas. Fleas are the insects where lateral compression is seen, whereas siphonculata and malophaga where the louses are there, they are dorsoventrally compressed. That is very important and siphonoptera are the parasites of, ectoparasites of many of the warm blooded animals. And coming to next important group, strepsiptera. Here every point is important because every point is an exception in case of the order Strepsiptera. Here the females are endoparasites whereas the males are free living. So there are diverse characters in order Strepsiptera which are to be remembered and mouth parts are degenerate biting type. Okay. They are degenerate biting types and antenna are flabellate. What are the types of antenna which are present in Strepsipterans or endoparasitic uh, order Strepsiptera or stylopids? that is flabellate type and the females are wingless in this case and trochanter is absent. Another exception which is important point in the order Strepsiptera. So, I have marked in red because all these points pertaining to order Strepsiptera are important in the taxonomy aspect. Okay. The pupal stage is absent in females. Another exception, the males have the pupal stage but the females are lacking the pupal, the pupal stage in case of the order Strepsiptera and development is hypermetamorphic uh, metamorphic, that is more than the uh, uh, maximum number of stages are uh, existing in this uh, metamorphosis of the particular insects under the order uh, Strepsipterans. Okay. And Pseudohaltias, while discussing about the Diptera, we have discussed already in Diptera, it is very important and often confusing. In Diptera, hind wings are called as or modified as Haltias they are the balancing organs okay whereas in strepsipterans four wings are modified into haltier like structures so they are called as pseudo haltiers this point is very important and has to be memorized to avoid the confusion between these two Next order is Zoroptera. It, has, it is characterized, characterized by the presence of asymmetric uh, male genitalia and Y shaped epicranial suture and prothorax is well developed. So, these three points are important pertaining to the order Zoroptera. Next is Socopterans. In this, the clypase is swollen and Lacinia is modified into rod like structure, which is called as a pick. Okay. And dorsal pair of uh, labial glands are modified to silk glands. So, silk glands we have discussed in two orders that is in the embiopterans, the basitas of 4 TB are modified are bearing the silk glands as well as spinnerets for silk production. In this case, socopterans, the dorsal pair of labial glands, dorsal pair of labial glands are modified for silk production. Okay. 
and next order is melophaga that is as we discussed already lateral compression is seen in case of siphonoptera that is fleece whereas the order melophaga as well as the next coming order that is siphonoclator the body is dorsoventrally compressed okay and both these orders that is melophaga as well as uh, um, the siphonoclator they are secondarily wingless so which of the following orders pterygote orders are secondarily wingless that question can be asked so any of the uh, option that is which includes mallophaga or siphon glata can be answered okay and large triangular head border than the thorax so head the width of the head may be wider than the thorax in the, in the case of mallophaga and the x of this any louses that is uh, in the siphon glata as well as mallophaga they are called as nits it is also very important basic question what are the x of louses called as nits okay the best example of mallophagan which uh, attacks the uh, that is uh, for, uh, birds that is poultry birds is uh, menopon pallidum coming to the next order that is siphonculata they have a dorsal thoracic spiracles and dorsoventrally compressed they are also like the mallophaga and they are also secondary wingless same as the case of uh, mallophaga and mouth is surrounded by a row of hooks which are anchored into the host skin while feeding so they are feeders generally house louses they feed on the different uh, mammals including human beings so the human louses are comes under the order siphonculata whereas the shaft louses are uh, included under the order mallophaga okay and they are we discussed about the dorsoventral compression as well as uh, secondary winglessness and mouth is surrounded by row of hooks so these are inserted while the feeding activity okay and there are three slender stylets which are withdrawn into the pouch like stylet called as buccal pouch trophic pouch or stylet pouch so what is this structure then based on the name of the structure the question may be asked the buccal pouch or trophic pouch is present in which of the pterygote orders or which of the orders which are having uh, the nature of secondary winglessness that is siphonculata so these are the important points uh, pertaining to some of the minor orders and let us discuss some let us discuss few more important points pertaining to different orders of insects in the exam point of view okay so studying taxonomy in a clumsy way will always lead to confusion so let us deal point wise and only important questions i have mentioned in the slides and i am trying to explain and other points are what is the new insect order identified by oliver zampro that is mantaphosmatodia it is also called as the gladiators or heel walkers okay and the insect order mantaphosmatodia is also called as gladiators so it has resemblance of uh, three different orders okay so it is called as mantophasmatodia it name itself indicates that it is, uh, relates to mantids and stick insects and odonate uh, odonata so these three uh, resemblance to these three orders uh, gave the name the, to this particular order as ma mantophasmatodia okay and skippers skippers are the insects example rice skipper is very uh, well known and is a very uh, well known pest of rice it belongs to the family hesperidae of the order lepidoptera so in the major orders like uh, hemiptera coleoptera lepidoptera as well as diptera the families under each suborder can be asked and each family has a characteristic example that is uh, example of insects that can be asked as a question so next is tubulifera and terebranchia are the suborders of which order tysonoptera thrips okay this i have already discussed in the earlier slide orally so so the suborders may be mentioned and they can be asked to uh, they can ask you to identify the order to which these uh, suborders belong to okay and next are bladder footed legs are characteristic symptoms of uh, characteristic feature of the insect thrips so bladder like legs are present in case of insects called as thrips that is tysonopterans and right mandible is rudimentary it's very important questions appeared n number of times in most of the competitive exams okay and suborders megaloptera and planipenia belong to the order neuroptera okay and fireflies are glowworms so uh, light producing glowworms or fireflies belong to which family 
if it is given fireflies many will be confused and they will be thinking that it belongs to the order diptera but they belong to the order coleoptera and the family lampyridae okay and antlions belong to the family mermilionidae and the order is neuroptera okay antlions belong to the order neuroptera whereas the uh, being specific it belongs to the family mermilionidae and family membracidae includes tree hoppers or cowbugs so this example is from hemiptera order hemiptera okay so remembering the family and the example under that is very important exam point of view and trophallaxis what is trophallaxis the mechanism of feeding the younger ones with the food by oral and anal trophallaxis so trophallaxis is of two types generally that is oral trophallaxis as well as anal trophallaxis that is the mechanism of food sharing seen in case of insects of the order isoptera that is termites okay and continuation of other important points that is malfeasion tubules are absent in which of the orders so i have just reviewed and uh, try, uh, trying to put in a gist so that you can uh, at, in a single place you can get many number of questions and the examples are pulled so that you can understand very easily so coming to other important points that is the malfeasion tubules which are uh, principal excretory organs in insects so which are the orders which are devoid or which orders don't have these malfeasion tubules are diplurans columbolans and aphids okay aphid is uh, insect but the orders coming to the orders the diplurans and columbolans are lacking this malfeasion tubules okay and in the similar way compound eyes are lacking or compound eyes are absent in protura diplura as well as columbola okay three of the eight erigot orders are lacking the compound eyes except the thysan uh, thysanura okay and antennae are absent in protura as well as arachnida so the antennae are absent in the order protura whereas they are absent in the class arachnida okay and two pairs of antennae are present in crustacea class crustacea it is a characteristic feature that is two pairs of antennae are present in crustaceans and tarsus as two segmented in zooropterans whereas it is single segmented in case of diplurans as well as siphunculata that is louses and coming to the pygidium pygidium is a characteristic feature if it is if the order is asked it is coleoptera but if they ask in specific which family the characteristic feature is pygidium it is brucidae okay and snout in the weevils is a modified uh, form of the fronts and vertex as we discussed yesterday in the uh, mouth parts or the head segmentation there are from lower part to upper part there are labrum clypeus fronts vertex epicranium and so like that these two parts these two parts in case of weevils form the snout like structure okay fronts and vertex form the snout in case of weevils and next there are different types of legs in case of different insects so remember carefully it's quite, uh, quite confusing that bladder footed legs are present in case of thrips so basket type of legs in the similar way are found in odonata and leaf footed legs are seen in case of bugs that is of coridae and brush footed legs are seen in case of nymphalidae okay so all this description is regarding the legs so what relates to what that is thrips what are the types of legs present in thrips that is bladder footed so memorizing this and remembering is very important there is no concept or logic behind it pictorically seeing the particular insect and remembering the type of leg that is important and side runners we discussed already side runners are jacids or leaf hoppers okay so pertaining to taxonomy you may get the questions pertaining to different orders and the basic examples of that particular insect that is example for example precopterans include some insects stone flies okay and globletids includes globletodians and other insect orders like uh, odonata includes dragonflies damson flies and micopterans includes scorpion flies so in that way characteristic example of particular order is important and in some of the major orders they may go up to the family level or suborder level where there is a division okay so examples of particular family insects examples for uh, pertaining to different families are very important and some of the important points like uh, uh, pertaining to sersai uh, mandible presence or absence or uh, absence of compound eyes or 
special features like pi gdm so all these important points which are uh, there are just only one to two important points in each order so better to remember those points for the exam point of view and that makes you answer the questions related to taxonomy very easily